Hello, good morning everybody. This is George from Show with George FX. Today I'm going to show you how to navigate through the MetaTrader 4 app. So the MetaTrader 4 app is the application that you use to trade on the Meta, to trade the Forex market. So on a dashboard, this is uh, MetaTrader 4 from Forex time. So the other MetaTrader 4 from IC market. So the whole lot of them. So when you double click on the app, you, it will open up a terminal of this nature. And at this very point in time, a lot of us are not conversant on how to use this application, but I'm gonna show you how to use this application shortly in the next 15 minutes. So every application, as you all know, has a, a menu bar, just like the five um, view insert, just like you have in your Microsoft Word and your Microsoft Excel. And um, some of these um, terminals may not be really open while you open up your window. So here is known as your chat window. This is your chat window. This is your navigator. This is your market watch. This is your terminal. So this is where you see your running trades while they are running. And then you have um, the market watch. You can move these terminals around. I can decide to place my my market watch above the navigator. That is how it should be. Here is known as the terminal. So you can see the name terminal, you can see navigator, you can see market watch. So when I go to my view, so I decide to view my market watch, I decide to view my navigator, I decide to view my terminal. So these are the um, three major places you watch out for your terminal, your navigator, and your market watch. Remember here is your chat window. This is your chart window. So this is where you build your chart. So this plus sign is where you can create a new chart. You can add up new pairs. You can add up your, your pairs, your major currencies, minor currency pairs, your exotics, your commodities, and such have you. So when I, maybe here's the minor card JPY, I click on card JPY, see a new window is open. So at the new window, that is where I can equally um, add, up, add up the chart. So now, here is where we have the file, under the file menu. What is more important in the file menu is the ability to log in. So this is where you, you click and you log in your account. So at the login here, you place in the login details. So these are details that your broker sends to you via email while creating an account, either a demo account or a live account. So you place in the login details, you put the login, put the password, you, you choose the server. So every, every broker has different server. So you choose the particular server and you say, okay, so I'm going to place cancel because I already have an account here. So here are some, <clears throat> some list of accounts that are logged in, some ECN demo accounts, Life accounts and ECM real accounts and stuff have you. So you see them on Navigator. Now, the next one we're going to look at here is <clears throat> still on the file menu. Uh, we have we have to log in, and um, then on that thing is your open data folder. This is where you can add some external indicators, some external expert advisors, and um, some external templates. So. At that place, the next one is my KO4. Then after my KO4, you can add, you can add a robot. You can attach a robot here. You can equally attach an indicator. You can attach some scripts. So these are more for developers, and these are more for persons that want to use some external tools while trading. So I'm going to create a couple of videos to elaborate on that. So on the view menu, it's like I told you, you're going to. That's where you you add your your standard bar, chart bar, your line status, your time frames. And this is your time frame. This is your time frame. And these are your status bar. These are your line bar here. You see these lines. You can see draw a horizontal line, draw a trend line, draw a vertical line. And uh, this is your line status. You can see this uh, um, region here. So if I go to the chart, you can notice that below here, there's a count of numbers. So at every point in time, just um, take a look at your, your, your view. Just be sure that 
the two bars are all ticked. The, the two bars are all ticked. So when you untick them, you notice that there could be a disappearance. If I untick standard, you notice something disappeared from here. So I'm gonna go back to tick it again to ensure it comes back. So you see, so this is my standard. So this is my standard where I can zoom my charts, where I can navigate my chart. So I'll give you an assignment to go to your um, your menu, view menu, and untick all these and see what happens and bring them back. So your status bar, my chat bar, they are all ticked. So I have my market watch is on, I have my computer is on, I have my camera is on, and the rest of them. So under insert, this is where I can insert tools on my chart. So the next one, the, the first one is indicators. I can insert indicators. Indicators are tools that help us to predict the market, to predict whether the market is going to go up or come down. That is, if it's going to buy or sell. So these are some indicators that are already on the terminal. So these are indicators that are already on the terminal. So their names are there. You are selector, selector information, a good number of them. These are train indicators. These are oscillators. These are volumes. These are Bill Williams. So um, the volume, the measure the the, the, the level of the buyers and the sellers. That's why you have your monetary index. That's why you have your OBV, that's the unbalanced volume. So you can also, um, later we can dive in on how to use these indicators. Then the oscillators are also there. You can also check the meaning of oscillators and know how they measure the, the, the movement of the price. Then these are the trends indicators. Then under the custom indicators, this is where you can see the indicators that you add by yourself. That you add by yourself. Like for instance, let me take for instance, this first one is the signal bar. Let me choose the signal bar. So this indicator, I actually um, bought it. So I normally use it. So you can see it appears here. The color tells me that this pair is bullish. Um, these are some, it works with um, Combined indicators that the IHC, the MACD, the stochastic, and the EMA. It has EMA, so telling me that it's bullish on the one minute, five minutes, three minutes, thirty minutes, one hour. It's bearish on the four hour, and it's bullish, sort of mist on the daily. So this is the spread. It tells me the spread of this pair. It tells me the spread of this pair. Um, the spread is nine. Nine points, just zero point one pip. Okay, one pip, just struggling around one pip. Then the pip to open is just ten pip, just eight pip from when it opened. The high to low it has moved on um, twenty four point five pips today, and daily average. And from study, it has calculated that the daily average pip movement of this pair it's um, fifty fifty one pips, fifty one point six pips. So that means this pair doesn't really move that much. So these are some of the information I can get from this indicator. So there are some, a whole lot of them that I normally um, utilize to um, trade. There's a good number of them. So on that custom guys, you can see them. And when I showed you the file and open data folder, that is how I add them up. I go to MTL4, I go to indicators, I add those indicators here. So now we are okay with the insert. Okay, the indicators, these are your insert lines, the vertical lines, horizontal lines, and the trend lines. So we know that we use the horizontal lines to uh, catch up with the key levels. I try to place it here. So it's, we use the horizontal line. Same thing with here. You can pick it up from here, click and click on the second place. So we use it to to find out support and resistance or key levels, as the case may be, trend lines are to observe trends. Trends, so I can hold on here and maybe drag it down. So I can use it to observe trends, and I can also use it to to get the shape, the shape of the, the price, as the case may be. So I can decide to. This is highlighted already. 
right click, print properties, I can start to change the color to my player color. I can start to change the type of the line. I can start to make it thicker, bolder, as the case may be. So these are some of the options I can do. So here I can start to shift this chart away from, from that flow of the two flows. Um, so that's what the trend line can do. This is also insert line, the trend line. You can see that this is a trend. This is a trend. Um, from this trend line that I just inserted, you can observe that I was able to dictate when there was an when there was a break, like here. So the break is the test and price started going up. So while we go deeply into technical analysis, you can know how to technically utilize these tools. But I'm just telling you how to use them. You just have to click. You see the, the, the icon has changed. I click somewhere, I hold and I drag and drag and drag and drag to anywhere and I leave it. So why you leave it? You double click, it highlights, it has three buttons, one, two, and three. The one at the middle is to move the entire line. The one at the extreme is to remove to any desired angle. So I can start to move to this angle and why I move this to this angle as the case may be, depending on how I wish to draw the line. When I think there are other options I start to delete as the case may be. So that is on the insert. So I can start to insert line. Um, so the vertical line can just be used as a display fancy. Maybe after a prediction, I can drop a line here, probably so that after some days, I can see what was the outcome of my prediction. Maybe I was predicting that the price is going to bounce and start flying up. So after some days, I can watch out for the prediction. Because when you look at this horizontal line, you notice that it, it tries to mark out the it tries to mark out the time and the date for you. So that is very important. Now, if we are okay with the lines, then the channels, that's where you have the, the three channels and then um, the linear regression. So we are majorly using just the epidistant channel. So the epidistant channel is a double, it's a channel as the case implies. So I've clicked on it, you can see it has a double line on the icon. So I hold and drag. So keep your eyes on the down part. Keep your eyes from here to here. So I'll drag, I can highlight. So it has one, two, three. The same way I move a trend line. So just the second line can just use to balance up the channel. So you can see that. You can see that. So you can actually use the trend line and the equidistant channel to dictate a trend, dictate a trend why the price is falling or moving upwards within a diagonal in a diagonal so you can just use this to dictate that and at the points of breakout these are opportunities for you to make a huge um, lot of money you can see here price coming up bouncing here you take a buy take a sell comes down just like that here is a breakout to keep buying and all that so these are some things you need to watch out for. So we are still at the channels. I said all we need is just the equidistant channel. We don't need it down to for now. The Fibonacci was going to look at the replacement tool for now. So okay, let me just introduce the Fibonacci tool. So um, what you need to what you need at the Fibonacci tool is just to measure the level of the retracement. Let's take for instance. If you are on a downtrend, you measure from up to down. And if you are in an uptrend, you measure from down to up. So let's, um, we're in a downtrend. So I'm going to take from up here to down. So I'm taking from this high, um, I'm taking from, this high to this low. So, okay. I think we are really having a choppy um, chart here. I would like to introduce the Fibonacci to when 
I must have showed you how to change the color of your background. So these are shapes. We normally use the rectangular shape to mark up zones, like here. You can mark up this zone with a rectangular shape because some key levels may not really be accommodated with a line. You can decide to mark it up with a zone, which the rectangular shape does that for me. So some of these tools under the chat menu, they are already on our toolbars. That's where you have the bar chart. You can change the time, you change your time frame, you shift your chart. They are all here already. So we're going to look at that place. So under tools, this is where you can execute a new order. Your metaphor language editor, this is where you can do some compilation, some complex um, developer options. Options, this is where you can um, so you either can connect your expert and your advisors or trade. You can decide to activate your one click trading if you want to be um, taking um, automatic trades. That is, that allows you to not see a dialogue box while trading. So there are some stops you can work on. on this page. They are more technical. So we are done with this menu as of now. So here, this is where you can add a new chart, which I showed you before. Euro USD is added. You can see if I click on this place, they are all Euro USD, card, yen, card, yen. So these are market watch. These are market watch. So if I click on it, it disappears. The market watch goes as I click, it returns. So that's the assignment I gave you, which I'm going to do. So this is our, uh, this is our navigator. This is our terminal. That's the try I told you. you can, here is where you can open a trade. So you can decide to execute trades from here. So let me show you how you can execute trades. Okay, we just had a trade running um, for some time, but that's not what we're looking at. So right now we are on this um, card JPY. We can show you how to execute trades. So this is a new order. So this is the symbol. We're already on card JPY. This is the volume. And at the recent times I've spoke out Taught us about volume. It has to do with your lot size, the quantity you want to buy. So let's go for the lowest, 0 0.01. So this is where we insert our stop loss price, the price at which you want to leave the market when we are losing, and the take profit is the price at which you want to leave the market while we are making um, profits. So the current market price is at 79.13. So that means if I'm so if I'm to buy, my stop loss is lower. If I'm to sell, my stop loss is higher. So I, let me decide to buy at this point. So I'm going to have the stop loss that is lower. Let me take for instance, I'm going for 79.00. My stop loss, that is just 13 pence. And I'm, my take profit is 79.50. So I'm going to buy the spare. So when you look, I'm going to go to the lower time frame. So when you look at our stop loss, see we are risking just minus $1.37. This is my take profit. This is my take profit. So we are going for $3 and this is my entry um, price. So now, um, still on placing the trade. Let's take for instance, let me use those parameters again. My stop loss was 79. 0 0.00 and my take profit was is 79.50. So if I decide to buy, it's going to go, but if I try to sell, it cannot be executed. Why? Because in a buy trade, my stop loss is lower and my take profit is higher. Just like you can see here, stop loss is lower, take profit is higher. That's why it's called TP, take profit, SL, stop loss is a buy trade. So for a, a, a sell trade, it has to be an inverse. That is, my stop loss needs to be higher or my take profit should be lower. So we have to take note of that. So let's take for instance, this is Euro USD, and I'm going to execute a trade 0 0.01. So the current price is 1.1278. So let me take a higher stop loss so that I can take a sell trade 85. Is higher 
there, 1.1 to, let's say, 60. So I cannot execute a buy order, but with these parameters, I can execute a sell order. So it is now executed. So lower time frame, 15 minutes, so you have that this is a sell order, this is the stop loss, and this is the tick profit. So back to card JPY. Remember, it is a currency pair. So this is where you execute your order. So I've shown you how to execute the buy order and the sell order. There are other four types of order that you can find on your Meta Trader for. That is your pending order. So under pending order, type of order, the first one is the two amount of execution of the pending order. That is your buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, sell stop. So they also use the same principle of the buy and sell order, which for the buy stop loss below, take profit above. So the difference is just your entry, which we're going to get another video to intensify on types of market order. But at least you can know where to choose them. And then the difference between those market execution and this pending order is that you are the one to choose the price and the pending orders. So, all right. So quickly, this is where you can change um, this chart views. So this is the candlesticks. We normally use the candlestick, it's just on the bar chart. So this is the candlesticks I have to choose, choosing the candlesticks. You may not really see them clearly, so I have to zoom. So you can see that these are candlesticks right now. So formerly they were a bar chart, but right now they are candlesticks. So these are candlesticks. Candlesticks. So here I can decide to shift my chart. You see, at the extreme, my chart is at the extreme of the screen, so I can shift it away from here. So while I take these two buttons off, I can decide to move back to this step as long as I want to move back to this step. But when I get it, when I click here, I get back to the real time ticking. And when I click here, I take it away from the extreme there. So I've actually shown you whatever tool you pick, this is where you drop. This is where you can come and drop your mouse. Like my mouse has something else. I can come here and drop and drop it. It has a, a line. I don't want to draw it again. I come here to drop. So this is called your crosshair. You use your crosshair to examine a particular candlestick and know the time and the price. Know the time and also the price. So I can use it to measure my pips. I can put my hand here, drop, hold, and drag down. So this is up to 45 pips. Look at the number in between half 44 and 9. That is 44.9. Pips. So that is for your crosshair. Then to, I told you we normally use the um, vertical, horizontal, diagonal, equidistant, Fibonacci retracement. These are the major tools that you require. These ones are to write a text. You may decide to write a text on your chart. You may decide to write a, a text if it has background to ensure um, they don't go up. So you can decide to type anything of your choice on the text. So this may be what I want. And this is Jerry George FX. So that's fine. So um quickly this is where you can choose different time frame to view. This is my one minute time frame, five minutes, um 15 minutes, one hour onto the monthly time frame. So why are we going to multiple time frame analysis. You can know how to utilize this different time frame. So let's go to the last part, how I can edit my chart. So this is my chart. When I when I right click on my chart, you have properties. So that's where you can see the options to edit your chart. So looking at the chart, there are some lines crossing here and there. It's called the grid. So when you click here, that's how you take away the grid. And when you click on properties, um, that is where you here on properties here on properties. All right. So we've taken away the grid. We clicked on properties. Let me come back for me. Click on properties. So these are some color scheme. You have your you have your um, black and white. You have um, your green and black, which is what we're using. That's your yellow and black, green and black, and you have your 
white and black. So these are some of the, the options you can use depending on the particular one that are good for you to visualize your chart. Sometimes you can stay on the green and black and decide to change um, these colors to lime and red where you change all the bull, all the bull to lime and all the beers to red. So, so the bulls are have to bear the line while they bear, bear the red. So this is a preview of what we want. So we can decide to make our charts up this way. So thank you for watching this clip. You can drop your questions in the group or in the comment section. And so this is an easy way for you to navigate to your Meta Trader 4. So this is where you can see your trades. You can try to close them using the X button. You can try to close the trades. So this is where you can see your account history, the history of the trades you've taken. So thank you very much for watching.